We've been talking a bit recently on this channel about the Iron Age, what it means, what it's all about. And uh, Chris Braley of Bleeding Full has actually written an article here. Chris is a, uh, a friend of the show, and it's I thought it's a really cool, interesting breakdown on what it's all about and what it could mean, and even a new site that's sort of popping up against. And I'm just going to jump right into it here. He says, there's been a lot of discussion in the last year or so about an independent Iron Age of comic books, film, games, and other multimedia. But what does the term Iron Age mean when it comes to comics and other media? About a year ago or so, Pizza Mini, the publisher of Alterna Comics, posted a thought in response to a video by Clint Stoker, creator of Downcast. Shout out to Clint, another friend of the channel. In the video, Clint was asking what age of comics would follow modern comics, similar to how we've had the Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age. If you don't know, the Golden Age was the original age of comic books, and then that sort of uh, evolved into the Silver Age, Bronze Age, and so on. Some people say Copper Age, uh, Modern Age, all that sort of stuff. Usually, this sort of thing is uh, decided upon after the ages ended but you know people will speculate what's uh, what's coming next um pete Semedi goes on to say circa 2020 so on i think we look back and we find we are in the iron age forged by creators and readers that stood, stood strong and exhibited determination and an iron will similar to the iron age we're finding new tools at our disposal and able to become more prosperous independent and advanced because of it and look at this smart fella here with a tweet. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, right there in the uh, article. Viva la creator-owned comics revolution. Yes, we hold our creator-owned comics up uh, loud and proud. The article continues on. Comic book creators, and in fact, all independent media creators, face, face unique challenges today. I want to jump into some of these challenges because you could say this, uh, what are those actual things? I mean, we talk about this a lot on this channel. You've got uh, new advances in technology. Uh, that obviously means the barrier for entry for a lot of these things is lower than it ever has been before, especially for comic books, but now even for video games, um, tabletop games. Uh, obviously, you know, pretty much anyone can sit down and uh, write a story these days so that means there's way more competition now at the uh, at the entry level and also with the internet that in that industry and creative knowledge that used to be you know secret get to go and be an apprentice for or go to school for that's available to everyone now to you can just go online and learn it so there's the expectations from customers are getting higher and higher as that uh, bar for entry gets lower and lower. Going back to the article, with their ability to create physically or digitally across the globe now greater than ever, and the established institutions and industry giants are filled with low talent ideologues who produce increasingly derivative and propagandist propagandistic content. Not only that, as if you're a creator, if you want to come out there and you find this the more popular you get, not only will your creativity and talent be called into question, but your your very integrity as a human being, they will come after that as well. This is how vicious it is out there in the current climate as a creative. Uh, it goes on, this type of situation should be a recipe for success, but many creators still struggle because those media giants dominate access to the average consumer and actively work to suppress upstarts that don't tell the acceptable narrative. So we see that time and time again. This access to the average customer, I've actually done a video on this, how it's sort of at the moment at least a kind of Achilles heel to this creator-owned Iron Age movement because not only are you expected to be this creative genius who's highly productive you're also at the moment expected to be a master showman capable of building and uh, inspiring a large audience of, uh, of willing customers. Uh, that's the only way that exists at the moment to circumvent these traditional consumer channels that these, uh, that these people dominate and will tear you down the moment you try to circumvent them. Comic books always had its Stan Lee out there promoting the medium to everyone, hyping the whole thing up. In Comicsgate, we have our own Stan Lees, charismatic figureheads who promote the creations of others who don't ha necessarily have that big platform themselves. We've got people like Ethan Van Sciver, John Malin, Shane Davis, 
But, you know, at the end of the day, a handful of people can't possibly be the promotional machine for several hundred, potentially thousands of uh, other creators looking to make their mark. And CG, we do an exceedingly good job of this, uh, picking up the slack. You've got channels such as myself, up and coming channels, uh, people like Mandy Summers, John Delarose, uh, Jeremy Lord Crackhead. You got lots of many, many others, too many to name that are doing that work uh, that we need to do to uh, to put these creations that we're making in front of customers. You know, our reach is still small, but it's big enough to make a difference to those uh, who need it. Going back to the article, it continues on. Although Alterna Comics has programs that specifically assist indie comic creators, it's not the perfect fit for everyone. Comicsgate has stepped into the fray and is a loose association of former comic book pros who at one time were quite prolific in the comic book media, but with left-wing ideologues taking over the mainstream and press publishers, their philosophies, politics, and point of views are considered verboten and have been unfairly pushed out of the industry. There are other like-minded creatives who aren't even doing comic books that have faced similar suppression and blacklisting who have found themselves with no one to rely on but themselves a plight most, most indie creators have understood for years. Yeah, this woke conversion is not just obviously related just to comic books. It's, uh, it's affecting all industries, all media. You talk about writers, especially those writers of uh, sci-fi and fantasy, tabletop gamers, video game creators, filmmakers, animators, even knitting circles have fallen victim to this. But going back to the article, it says here, to help such creators as these overcome some of the hurdles, a new media aggregator called Iron Age Media has risen and made it their primary goal to help independent creators build networks of their own and usher in a new era of creative freedom. This is the website he's talking about here. If you guys want to go check it out, it's got a bunch of different uh, links to different things. Some Comicsgate books on here I see, novels and things like that. Uh, yeah, there's been there's been some big winners so far. If we want to look at all this in a broad uh, sense, obviously we've got uh, Ethan Van Skyver in Comicsgate, definitely the biggest winner there. One point two million dollars on his latest campaign from uh, close to twelve thousand backers there. Uh, in comics itself, we've got the uh, Ripperverse. That's the biggest thing ever, as far as I'm aware. 3.7 million dollars raised, forty two thousand, nearly forty three thousand uh unique purchases this is shadowversity's uh comic book here he's a he's a youtuber and author he's turned his novel into a graphic novel and so far he's sitting on over half a million australian dollars he's an aussie so i get to say uh, australian dollars and uh this one here is the long moonlight which is a novel sort of a, a pulp novel by um razor fist you'll know razor fist uh as a as a youtube critic as well Speaking of YouTube critics, you've got Rogue Elements, which is a new film that is being fundraised right now over on Kickstarter. It's based on the uh, novel series by Critical Drinker, another YouTube critic there. So yeah, there's so much going on out there in the world of entertainment. And though the ages, Iron Age, Golden Age, Silver Age, Copper Age, Bronze Age has traditionally been used to describe the ages of comic book fare, Maybe this is the way we overcome uh, all those forces aligned against us uh, by recognizing the similar challenges that we all face together in all forms of media and entertainment. Uh, there's an argument happening right now in the indies where between one side says we should just ignore everything that's happening in the media. They completely have lost the plot. They're never going to listen to us. We can scream and bang our heads against the wall till the cows come home and they're never going to change. We should just focus on our own new creator-owned creations and building them up. The other side thinks, well, we shouldn't give up so easily on these stories, these characters that we've loved. We should fight for them, actually, and we should we should be calling out those who are behind all these really shoddy adaptations and reboots and all the stuff that we've been seeing from uh, Disney and Amazon and all those guys. Personally, I think we should be doing both. Firstly, because that's how we reach the most possible people. The people don't know about our own indie creator-owned creations yet, but they know about the big mainstream 
famous, well-known properties. So that's how we're going to catch their attention. And that fits in with us being united across all the different forms of media and entertainment. And secondly, and selfishly, uh, that's how we gain new customers for our own content. When we point out where the mainstream is failing in the franchise franchises they've been entrusted with, that's how we find new people and they can come over and and uh, maybe support what uh, what we're doing. Lastly, I think we should do it on principle. We should stand for something, whether it's the Iron Age or something else. Uh, this, uh, it, you know, if our creator-owned content is to have any lasting impact on this uh, cultural landscape, it's because we're going to be standing against vapid, degenerate, ideologically driven nonsense that's been dominating our entertainment for so many years now but i want to hear what you guys think tell me in the comments what you think how do you think we should proceed forward are you all on board with this new uh, iron age of all independent medias coming together to uh take back the space i really i'm really interested in hearing what you think please do if you enjoyed this video give it a like consider subscribing and consider becoming a member you're helping to create new comics right now as we speak. All right, that's it from me. I will see you on the next one. Bye.